Welcome everyone to the Beacon of Light podcast this evening. Tonight we have Miss Lillian Brummett and we are so excited to have her here. You can see on her great background, the a media group. And tonight we're gonna be talking all about marketing and some different ideas that will help you as authors stand out in a crowd. But before we jump into that, we need to jump into this. I'm April Tribe Juke. Welcome to the Beacon of Light podcast. I believe we are all made with light, and light is hope. This podcast brings authors who write stories of hope to all of you. Your journey to be inspired and amplified by these stories starts now. And we are back. So welcome, everyone. When you show up here, just please go ahead and tell us where you're from, how you're watching this, and we would love for you to be a part of the conversation this evening because this is all for authors and marketing. We've been focusing a lot on this through the whole month of June, and we will be continuing this through July because there is a lot of opportunities for authors out there to connect with your audience and to understand what it is that they want to really read about. So Lillian, before we jump into all of that, share a little bit about yourself and where you're from. <laughs> okay, well, hi everyone, I'm Lillian. Uh, I live in BC, Canada, the southwestern uh, corner of Canada, for those of you who aren't familiar with Canada. It's, we live in this beautiful valley, my husband and I have 32 years as of July. We have our wedding anniversary in July, which is really cool. Um, and we are we work together to run the Brummett Media Group. And that includes our, our books that we write and promote our two popular blogs, and also our YouTube channel and Dave's drum teaching studio and repair services that he does for drummers and percussionists. So we're, we're kept pretty busy. Um, we have a huge passion for gardening. Um, if I could, I would spend every moment growing green stuff. I absolutely love getting my hands in the dirt and I call it playing in the dirt. It's a real passion of mine, uh, preserving the food and, you know, uh, dealing with the harvest. That's wonderful. The The whole concept right now, I know gardening has just really been a focus on so many people and getting into things again. Um, I've had, I hung up my, my gardening gloves down in Texas for about mm -hmm. six years because it was just such an unfamiliar climate and there were many, many different things happening in our life at that time. And now I'm back West where I'm mm -hmm. very familiar with the, with the climate and the weather and started putting my hands back in the dirt and I could see my grandma smiling from heaven above looking down saying finally put those skills back to work absolutely Whoa. it does connect us with our ancestors and our parents and many many generations before you know there's so many different varieties of of fruits and vegetables out there for us to explore that our ancestors have developed and made available to us and so it's really neat for, as a gardener to be able to play with all of those shapes and colors i mean this year i'm going i'm growing some striped roma tomatoes which is a, a heirloom variety this variety happens to be and we're also growing chocolate tomatoes these are cherry tomatoes that have the color of chocolate but when you slice them open they have like a pink red inside it's really interesting so you can have a lot of fun playing with these different varieties awesome it's so fun to see all of the the different pieces there and karen says that she connects with her grandmother through gardening as well and oh, she cool. lives way up north in the main i think area oh look <laughs> at her she says i love the chocolate cherry tomatoes oh, oh awesome. cool <laughs> we'll have to try it i have never heard of it so i'm still very very beginner but I remember the, the years and hours of canning with my grandmother. Yes. All right. She yes. says, yes, in Maine. Woo, I got that right. <laughs> yeah, Maine is very famous for their gardeners, especially my favorite gurus, the people that I look up to is uh, uh, um, Elliot Coleman and uh, his wife, Barbara Teckel or Teck text something or rather I forget her last name I'm so sorry Barbara but yeah excellent um gurus from Maine I really love the the gardening the views lots of great permaculture courses there I took an e-course from someone from there it was really cool 
Awesome. Incredible. Great. Hello, Jan. Thank you so much from Kentucky. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everybody, for this evening. So, um, Lillian, share with us tonight. You can see running on the ticker underneath us. It says, uh, Purple Snowflake Marketing, how to make your book stand out in the crowd. How do we do that? So share with us a little bit about why you wrote this book okay. and what it will mean to this group. Okay, well, when I first started out in the world of writing, I came at it from an entrepreneur, a marketing, a business management point of view because I had already run businesses in the past and done startups in the past. And so I came to it with that mindset. And so I, I actually took a course that helped me go through the business management aspect of being a writer. That helped a great deal. And my learning just kept on going from there. And here we are 25, 26 years later, still learning new things. It is an incredible university of knowledge out there to, to uh, explore when it comes to being a writer and also finding unique pockets of readers that would be interested in your particular unique book that you've put out. So it, when I started out, of course, I was taking all kinds of notes. I was learning from all these other gurus. I was asking a thousand questions. I was reading every book, listening to every interview, every bit of, of marketing research and writing research that you can imagine behind the scenes for at least the first 12 years of our career, learning as I went and taking courses and so forth. And over time, it, as I grew as a writer and I um, grew as an author as well, because I started out actually as a freelance writer, I moved into being a staff writer, an assignment writer, a professional book reviewer, and a professional product reviewer. And then I moved into a syndicated column, and then I moved into writing books. So it was a stage, stage by stage that I moved into. And when I got into the author marketing, um, I saw that there's this whole new world while I could apply many of the uh, techniques that I had learned about other aspects, different genres of writing to the plan for the book, the action plan for the books, I did find that it was a very unique situation. And so I went on this whole other learning curve and was again, taking all of these notes and all of, you know, creating my own written step-by-step -step guide that I could refer to for every book that I wrote. So over time, um, I was becoming known as a guru. People were coming to me for questions. They were coming to me for advice. When I was doing interviews online, I did a lot of interviews and articles and writings about the, the marketing aspect of the business. And so eventually um, I saw this, this real need for people to have a step-by-step -step guide that would walk them through the process of running their office efficiently, setting up their operation system, developing their action plan, business plan, succession plan, all of these kinds of aspects of their business, as well as, you know, what are they going to do for new additions? You know, your plan for your book is a lot more than just the honeymoon period, the first six, six months or 18 months of your direct contacts, your direct your, your knowledge of using your marketing plan. Usually that six months to 18 months, it's called the honeymoon period people start running out of ideas. And so our marketing book, our Purple Snowflake marketing book, here it is here actually, um, it has uh, a step-by-step -step guide to help them elongate that marketing plan for the life of their book, for future editions and so forth. So it's a very practical book. It's a book that they can apply to every single book that they write. And it helps them develop a unique plan for their unique situation at that moment in time. You know, what are your skills? What are your assets? What kind of context do you currently have? You know, what kind of skills are you willing to develop? There's this whole, you know, evaluation of who you are and where you are and what you already know. And then you take that and you start divide, you know, start developing your plan. So it really walks them through the process and it makes it so much easier for them. We always recommend because it is a, like a, this is an educational manual book, right? So what I always uh, recommend that our readers do is to read it through cover to cover the first time and just sort of get familiar with the, the knowledge that's in there and then go back and read it a second time with your book in mind. And so you can see how you might tweak something so that it suits your unique situation, your unique genre. Awesome. And in that uniqueness, that's something um, that's, that's really, really important because the audience 
is going to be different. So mm -hmm. um, the two people who are commenting here tonight, I know Karen, she has an incredible um, opportunity with, with her books and it's about, it's about healing and, and learning, you know, different ways that you can experience it. And so her, her audience is looking for that type of, that type of group and, and Jan's group, she's all into horses and, and how they can connect spiritually and what happens when you ride and, mm -hmm. and care for it, you know, so different, but very unique, special audiences. So to broadband that out mm -hmm. is probably not going to be the best idea a structured plan, something very focused within that group. And as that group starts to spill out, there's more opportunities. So Jen yeah, so, says, I need this book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you feel that way, Jen. You know, for those two examples, uh, for the horse, the author with the horse, the therapy, the spiritual, um, you could really go into like um, – uh, the, ther the, the therapy writing groups and organizations when they have their events, their conferences, when they're having their fundraisers, this would be a great opportunity for her to participate there because it fits. It's a direct audience. It's a highly targeted audience for her. So donating your books to their conferences as a door prize rather than saying, hey, can I present or hey, can I take up some of your valuable time? You're saying, hey, can I give you something? that's going to benefit you and your audience. And that opens that door up for you to network further with that organization once you've cracked open that door. So that's what I would start with, with that particular genre. Awesome. Wonderful. And so you can see there's a lot of great ideas here. And so within the book, you say to read it first, cover to cover. Yes. Tell us a few of the, the topics that we would find within the book. All right. Well, you know, in the very beginning, it's going to um, walk you through the realistic look of what it is to be a writer and the importance of keeping records. And I say I'll mention this a couple of times throughout the book. Usually I don't repeat information in a book, but in this one, I will mention keeping records quite a few times because it is so important to do. And so it gives a brief introduction about keeping records. And then it talks about, you know, your operations, your office, how are you going to run your office? What kind of equipment are you going to use? Are you going to borrow? You're going to rent? Are you going to outsource certain types of activities? Because maybe you don't have the budget to upgrade to a really fancy printer, but you can go down to the local printer and you can get your flyers, you know, uh, printed there. So you need to have some understanding of what your operations are going to be. You need to also have a business. The, the overall business plan is also going to involve things like, um, like your action plan, your succession plan. A lot of authors will forget to include a succession plan. So, you know, in your life, you have a will, you have a living will, end of life, you know, plan, in place, your family knows about it, your lawyers, your doctors, right? Or they should be in place. Uh, in When you run a business, you need to have a succession plan as well. So if should, something should happen to you, who owns the books? Who's going to you know, have the, the ownership of that book? And do you have wishes for that book for them to possibly consider following, you know, should they choose to do so? So these types of things you want to have kind of in, in mind, or at least in the planning stages when you're doing it. We also look at like, um, we look, we have you evaluate your situation, your own situation. So we're going to say, okay, well, who, what are your current obstacles in your life? What do you foresee right now in your career, in your this stage of your writing that you're seeing as obstacles? And then you want to have another like list where you're, you're listing all of your strengths, all of your opportunities that are right there, ready to follow up on. And having that on paper, ready to go, doesn't have to be a big binder full of all kinds of, you know, official information, but you want a basic plan in place where you look at, okay, these are my strengths and these are my weaknesses. This is how I'm going to be running my office. If something happens, I have these other outlets that I can go to locally that I can reach out to get to get things done. Should I have an event and my printer breaks down, what am I going to do? Having some contingency plans in place where you just sort of have an idea as to where you are and what you want to do. You're also going to start spying. So this is something that... Um, might sound like a negative connotation, but you, what you're doing is you're going into like-minded author and, and like very similar books. 
And so you're, you're evaluating um, what colors are they using? Why do you think they chose those colors? What kind of style do they do with their website? Why do you think they use that style, that font, that color, that design, those images? How do you feel that that impacts their readers? If you were a reader of that book, would that draw you in? What did you like? What did you not like? That gives you some examples to see what it, people are that are already out there pushing their books, what they are doing. And you can pick and choose and say, oh, I really like what they did with the border of their website, or I really like the white space that they added to their website. It makes it look so much cleaner and crisper. I want to do that. So you're basically stealing ideas that appeal to you from people who are already out there. They've already, you know, invented the wheel. They're out there rolling their cart and you're just basically going in there and saying, oh, I like what they did. And so you, you pick and choose from that. So all of that is in the very beginning stages of the book. That's just not even the, that's not even the first chapter. That's just the introduction part. Getting farther in, we talk about more like, okay, now we're going to create your contact list. And there's a great way of doing this. I, I know you want to ask me other questions, so I won't get too much farther into the book because there's, it's a 300 page book. So it's, there's a lot in it. Um, we're just up to like page 40, I think right now. Um, and so uh, the thing that I do is I go through all of my business cards, my address book, my emails that I've sent out over the last year. My all, If my daughter is involved in a course, I'm going to want to know who their teacher is because that is a connection to, to that teacher. You, you, you utilize people that are around you. What are they doing? What are they involved in? Could they crack open your connection to them? And their connection to another uh, organization opens a door to you, for you to, to reach out to that contact and have a, a better return on investment than if you came in as a cold call. Hey, you don't know me. I have no connection to you. I don't know anybody who works with you, but hey, I'd really like you to do something for me. So you come in from a completely different um, level and a much more friendly and, and you get so much more return on investment when you have that kind of insiders in into it. Um, I, we cover things like, you know, common new author questions. We have lots of FAQs in there for every chapter. Uh, we, we look at, you know, your business cover design, your keyword list, which is really intense, especially for online stuff. We work with, we talk with how, how to work with media, who do, who you're going to speak to, how you speak to them, ways of introducing yourself. Um, we give you examples for finding ways of getting reviews, what to do with those reviews, how to multi facet every aspect of your marketing plan so you can take that review and you can turn it into a blog post you can take it in you know there's so many things that you could do with each bit of material and recreate it into something else and post it on youtube or post it on your facebook or post it on you see what i mean so you can really rework that information we talk about internet marketing of course um but we also talk about like your back door, your back end, your, your guerrilla marketing, um, your alley cat marketing, your direct, your face to face, your presentations, your speaking. We cover all of the aspects of your marketing plan and give you ideas as to what to bring to events and, you know, where should you. Uh, be looking to place your booth when you're going to a fair where what is the most effective place to have your booth located at things like that so we cover all of the purple snowflake marketing aspects of each one of these marketing activities and by purple snowflake what I'm talking about here is there are you know what a hundred million books out there in English right now there are some 3,000 books being published a day after COVID so we're looking at a huge crowd that we're trying to stand out in. So how can we use those methods in such a way that we're going to stand out in that crowd? Now, one of the best examples that I like to give, because it's visually, you see in a bulletin board and you want to put a flyer up there, a little notice about your book, your event, what something like that. So instead of just having a square flyer or a big long flyer that's going to take up a huge amount of space, maybe we could think about making it smaller, making it a different shape, making it a different color, something that's going to stand out on that bulletin board among what other people already have on there, something that's going to 
withstand the weather. So maybe you want to laminate it. Maybe you want to have a QR code on your flyers and your bookmarks and your other materials so people can take that QR app and click on that and it'll go directly to your Amazon author page. There's things that we can do to utilize all of our promotional materials that make them so much more effective. And so our budget goes so much farther as well. Awesome. It's really great how quickly a QR code can connect yes. and just boom, you're right there. You can get it in just within seconds. And um, at the conference that I was at setting up my booth, I was kind of at the end mm -hmm. and pretty soon um, before lunch, the other people had left. So I just moved my stuff over. I didn't ask permission. <laughs> I, I kind of go afterwards. I just kind of moved it and no one said anything. So I'm like, sweet, setting up here. So I set it up and I had the colors, right, of this and the yellow. And so the yellow was standing out amongst all of this purple because they were used to everyone had some type of purple there because of how what the event was like. So here I am in my yellow against right. all the purple. So I am like, mm. yes, <laughs> standing, standing out, out. And that was one part. And then I had a simple QR code. And what was really great was in my presentation, the QR code was there almost mm. on every slide. And so they could just take it throughout that time and get it right then. And we just did the exchange and it was so fast. And there wasn't anything of, is your card reader work? Didn't, I didn't need to. I was nice. right there. They see it. I get the email that says, boom, they purchased. Here you go. And it was such a great exchange. And so, yeah, there's different ideas. And I could see other people writing down what we had done. They're like, oh, that's a good idea for next time. <laughs> yes. So that was flattering. And I'm like, oh, I got to stay on top of the game, right? So very, very interesting. Great, great opportunities. So what motivated you to start writing this book in the first place? Uh, quite honestly, it was all the people that were asking me questions. I found that I was getting asked over and over this repeatedly the same questions. And so I ended up having all of these like draft emails that I had set up so I could just copy paste and answer their questions because they were so familiar, you know, so similar to what I've already answered in the past. And eventually I just saw that this needed to be, that it needed to be published. And as soon as I started speaking with my connections online that, hey, I'm thinking about putting this together, they were right behind me. I got lots of cheers and accolades and a lot of cheerleading going on behind the scenes, you know, pushing me to, to finish it. The first edition was actually released, I believe, in 2012. And I think it's now in its third edition. And we just did the revision just last uh, just last spring. So um, it's been updated just, just a year ago now. Wonderful. So we've got all the updates. Mm -hmm. And this comes directly from people asking the questions. And that is the best way to, to write something is that if people are already asking and wanting something, if you can deliver with that type of book, you've just cut off half of the, the challenge of trying to find your your audience. And so, but don't despair. Those that have already written and now you're trying to find those people and trying to mm -hmm. find your groups, they're there. It just takes a little bit different, maybe um, different lane of how to get there. And so with Lillian's book, The Purple Snowflake Marketing, how to make your book stand out in a crowd, that is something that can help you. And I know Jan is, is very excited about this. She has Good. been um, working so hard on so many things and over the years wanting to have the success that she, you know, the, the work will now equal that success because she really puts a lot of time into that. And I know with Karen, similar wow. things. She has so many amazing um, insights and the the process of her book is, is very, very powerful. So, you know, anyone else who's joining us in this conversation tonight, if you have questions directly for Lillian, go ahead and ask away. We're, we're here. We're open. We've got a few minutes left. So ask those questions. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, it does. It's a very valuable book and something okay. that with these types of plans in place, you know, your success should should increase right if we we follow through we follow through absolutely exactly. you know there's so many uh outside the box ways of promoting our books just recently um earlier this year i had donated uh, i arranged to donate 
three copies of my books to an organization. Now, I often do this mainly because I just want to make a difference and I want to brighten someone's day. But in this situation, I got so much out of it. Um, I happen to know the manager of a thrift store. And this thrift store in our community is very popular. It gets a lot of really nice stuff. They clean it up. They fix it up. They sell it. All of the money goes to, it's volunteer run. All of that money goes to local organizations. So benefits the community in all kinds of different ways. I think they just donated some $35,000 just this last spring um, uh, to a variety of different organizations. So I was really, really excited about what they are doing and what they do. Like they donate, uh, someone's house is burned down, they'll help them out and give them whatever they need to get started again. If someone's running from a dangerous situation with, you know, not even with their clothes on their back sometimes, such in the case of women's shelters or something like that, they'll freely, without any cost, help them out and get them started with their new home. So they're an amazing organization. And so I thought, well, you know, wouldn't it be nice if my friend, the person who manages the store, could give away our books, a signed copy of a book to someone she saw who needed to be lifted up, you know, looked a little sad and maybe though she'd brighten their day or, you know, I wasn't sure what she wanted to do, but I, that was my suggestion. So she came back to me the next day and she said, hey, I went to the board of directors and we decided that we're going to do a month long draw at the store. So all month long, along with all the other prizes that they were able to, to gather and add to the contest, they had this box with a big poster and our books on display for, for a whole month. So all that foot traffic going in and out. Plus, they did the social networking promotions for the event. And, of course, I did it like crazy, too, especially on Facebook, you know, local Facebook groups and, uh, you know, cresting around town and all of these various groups. I made sure it was all announced and, and reminded people several times to enter the draw. And it was a fantastic response. They got a lot of people coming in the door that didn't know about the place as well because people were, you know, they benefited, we benefited. And it was just fantastic. I couldn't believe how much exposure we got out of just donating three books just because we wanted to do it. This wasn't a situation where I was saying, hey, I want to do a door prize so I can get the attention from your group. You know, it wasn't like that. It was just, I want to give this to Brighton Summit's Day. And look what happened. Like it was an incredible amount of exposure for an entire month here in the local city. There was another situation where there's a, 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 a huge volunteer run group where they do like Blossom. It's called the Blossom Fest. They do all kinds of festivals and fairs and all these events are happening over a three day weekend to celebrate the agricultural, you know, Mecca that we're in and, um, and much, much more restaurants, all kinds of organizations were doing all their own events at different times. So people could go to all these different things. And I, I noticed that it was happening and I thought to myself, darn, I meant to contact them earlier and see if I could give them some books as a door prize or, you know, for prizes at their announcements at the dance or something like this. And so I contacted them, sent out a quick note. And I said, I realize this is really late, but, you know, would you be interested? They were thrilled. They came and they picked up five signed copies. They ended up giving them out as prizes all weekend long. We got so much coverage. They did this huge, you know, uh, social media um, uh, celebration of the prize draw for our books and all of this, the big picture of our cover. We got so much out of it just from playing a role in doing something nice in the community. So there's lots of ways of getting out there and getting marketing, which costs no more than the price of your book. So that is fantastic. So anyone on that shoestring and anyone on that challenging time with the budget, because the more you can expose it, the more books get sold and then it will reverse into what you're doing. Uh, Jan asks a question. She wanted to know if you're involved with horses or horse therapy. No, but we do have an organization here locally. It's called TAPS, T-A-P-S. You can look it up online from Creston, B.C. I don't have their address on me. Um, therapeutic Action something rather <laughs> program. I'm not really sure the, what, the, what it all stands for. T-A-P-S, TAPS is the name of it. And I am connected with people that volunteer and work with that group. And uh, we've done some, sell we did, a, I think, a bit on them on our blog. We interview um, nonprofits and what have you on our blog. So I'm sure we did a, a blurb on them about that. My uh, late 
father-in-law was involved with them. They have a side group of volunteers that do uh, singing to raise funds for the group. And so um, he was a part of that part of the choir, which was pretty neat, neat connection there. So I have connection to them, but I'm not actually a part of them. They do amazing work with all kinds of people, you know, people with anxiety, people recovering from abuse, people with mental challenges, relationship counseling, like spousal relationship counseling events with the horses. It's amazing the different programs that they have available there. Wow, fantastic. So there's some more ideas for you there, Jen. And thank you for everyone who's popped up and joined us this evening. Well, we are about at the end of our um, interview tonight. So <laughs> Lillian, is there anything that you would like to leave us with in this last minute? My goodness, that went so fast, April. Thank you for this. I really appreciate it, Jen, Karen, and all the, all the everyone who is listening and, and who comes and listens to the archive. Thank you so much for dropping by and spending your time with us. We, we all really appreciate it. Uh, to find me online, just go into your favorite search engine and type in Lillian and Dave Brummett. Our last name is B-R-U-M-M-E-T. You'll find pages and pages of information on us there. Of course, our books are on Amazon and just type in our name. You'll find them there. Awesome, wonderful. Karen says, I will check out your book. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, everybody who popped up here this evening and been a part of the Beacon of Light podcast. Everybody, wish you well. Share your light. Shine it out there. Amplify those that you can by your service. And we will see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.